My name is Neil Murray. I'm the executive producer of the National Theatre of Scotland. And we co-produced the show uh, with Frantic Assembly. And I'm really pleased that Stephen Hoggett, who's the choreographer and director, uh, co-director of Frantic Assembly, is here with us. Because they were the real driving force to make this show happen. And we're going to be joined also by our brilliant cast. When, as and when? Hello. 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 We'll join us as, as we go on. Um, and I wanted to start. Um, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to ask Stephen a few questions in the company to chip in. And then we're going to let you ask some questions. So I wanted to start by asking Stephen, and, and some of this information is kind of in the public domain, but it'd be good to get a real, more of an in-depth answer of what it was that attracted you um, and Scott, your director, to Oxen and that led to Beautiful Bird. We've got two very different ways, uh, strands about how the show was. Because, um, Scott's been a lifelong boxing fan, um, but I didn't know this until I, I went to New York with Blackwatch and the Blackwatch boys, there was no showers in the theatre where they, where they performed Blackwatch. You had to run across the road to a gym, a Gleason's gym. And on one of the last nights that we were there, the staff director took me across the road. I didn't know that the gym was there. And so they, they, we, we walked off the street and it was about 10.30 at night and there was this gym and it's, it's massive. It's where Muhammad Ali trained, it's where Mike Tyson trained, it's where Hillary Swank trained for Million Dollar Baby, it's where the New York trained for Raging Bull. So there's all these photos around the gym. Um, so it's a very imposing place and it was full of, uh, full of very beefy looking men and women, all pummeling. Mm -hmm. and I, I remember being very, um, feeling very, um, very conspicuous and, and uh, being frightened of the place for about three minutes, and then afterwards just being fascinated by it and thinking it was one of the most beautiful places I'd ever been, and everybody was just completely in this amazing space, and it's very random, people all over the place, and uh, and. Uh, and uh, um, so I, I, I left and I came back to England and we were talking, frantic shows have always started from really small conversations that mean nothing. Whose phone is that? Who's <laughs> <laughs> embarrassed themselves? Um, it's Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um, so I came back and I, I, I spoke to Scott about being in this gym for 10 minutes and then he started talking about his lifelong um, appreciation of boxing. and. Um, and then we started talking about a theatre, if you, if you could make a theatre piece that had a boxing match in it. And I'd seen, I've seen three shows with boxing in it and they've all been shit. <laughs> so, um, you, I knew you could do it very, very badly, I knew you could do it really badly because I'd seen it and wanted to. Right, so they started with that, with that really and we came to Scotland for a week um, with National Theatre Scotland and we, we worked for one week. And the, the, the thing we wanted to find out, and I, it was just whether, and it's actually you, you were that weekend, and all we wanted to know was whether you could punch somebody. Really, that was that was wanted to figure out whether, whether you could put boxing gloves on each other and whether you could take a punch and and whether that would whether that would work. So it took us five days to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, it's great when you can punch your cast. So that was the start, really. That we, once we knew that that was possible, that was the start of the show. Welcome to a brilliant cast who will now join us. Um, can I just ask you, and you don't have, you don't have to do it all in time you down the line, but I just looked at you. <laughs> no, you no, no, just that, that point that Stephen's just made is maybe actually, this is on film, it's probably not you, but the five, you know, who had to kind of get on with getting training um, from the start of the year, I mean, what, what have been the things that have kind of kept you awake at night when, you, when you've had to approach this show? I suppose it's that scary place of... <coughs> I wasn't looking at him. <laughs> Uh, that scary place of misrepresenting or not looking like or looking rubbish at being a boxer was my fear. So when you're going to sort that out? <laughs> I'm trying really hard. <laughs> no, you know, because you know, I think people see through it very easily because, I mean, a boxer looks like a boxer. Yeah. Or a footballer looks like a do you know what I mean? The athletes yeah. and we're actors, you know, athletes. Mm. Let's just try to get there. I suppose you physically you don't need to. I mean, I, I know I don't look like a boxer, but I think it's just the, the way they carry themselves, or the weight, or how they throw a punch, or yeah, their attitude, I suppose, mm. as well. But but trying get, just trying to get a blend and a balance of that was the hard for me was the, the biggest challenge. I was, was going to say that <laughs> someone said you look most like a boxer. Is that right? Out of all, remember. Someone said that about the cast, is it actually you? Well, the Glaswegian boxer. Right. <laughs> 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 I 
It's nice when he's ripped. No, that guy's a dick. No, I, I, think, um, I, think, I think the movement kept me up at night. Because like Ryan says, boxers move in a certain way. They punch in a certain way. You know, they look... When you look at someone, you can just tell that's a boxer just by mm -hmm. his physicality, his grace on, on stage. I think that's what kept me up at night, especially with a character like AJ Chopper, because he is, he's more advanced at the start than everyone else. Everyone else catches up with him. So it was about finding that, the balance, like we were saying today, um, kind of um, getting really good at it and then yeah. getting really bad at it because we've got to show that we're beginners and we're amateurs. Do you know what I mean? The, yeah. that, that balance from beginner, amateur to professional kind of kept me awake at night. And it's also sort of holding on to technique as well when you start choreographing to sort of particular rhythms and counts mm -hmm. and stuff. Because sometimes mm -hmm. they, you then start dancing and it, this, the whole mm -hmm. technique is out the window and it just becomes about mm -hmm. movement, you know. And holding on to technique is probably something that I think we all kind of had a fear about. Mm -hmm. That point that Stephen made about trying to avoid the, the cliche of, of boxing stories, I think I'm, I'm going to look at Lorraine and Ewan now. Because, I mean, in a sense, your characters, you're the kind of, in a sense, I don't know, the, like the moral centre of the piece some way, mm -hmm. you know, both as, as the parent and the trainer. I mean, were you, were you conscious of that, of, of the danger of that, of that looking like the kind of the boxing cliché story? Yeah, I suppose I am conscious of that anyway. But, you know, especially when I think when it's a working class character, you know, that she just <laughs> buckles down and, and kind of gets on with everything and... You know, she's a plucky fighter and nothing gets to I'll just keep speaking. I'll just keep speaking. I'll Oh. Sorry, then. Go on. No, I was just going to say, so I think that comes down to the writing, really, to avoid that. And I think Bryony carefully avoided that. Certainly, I feel that anyway with my character. And, you know, and I, I know she's not a cliche because I know someone <laughs> like her, you know, very, very like her who's from Kilmarnock, who I have based my character on, and you know, and everything that Brian has written is, is true to me for that character, but I know. You, how do you feel in terms uh, well, of that kind of role model figure? I don't trainer. really, maybe, you know, it says a lot about my acting, but I'm not really bothered about, I'm not scared of cliches. I don't, it doesn't bother me if it, it, it if, if something is a recognisable figure, I suppose, is what a cliche really is in a way. And so yeah. I, I'm not, it doesn't really freak me out the thought that, well, this is a quite a cliched, um, cliched uh, character, whatever. I mean, often people see something and they respond to it because they feel that they can sort of know who that is already, which is, I suppose, a bit way to be in a cliche anyway. I don't know, it doesn't cliche thing. I run towards it. <laughs> <laughs> being, the, being the only girl boxer in the play, mm -hmm. how, uh, how did you, how did you approach that? And how did you feel about, you know, that 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 figure being kind of in this kind of um, testosterone fuel male yeah, world? Yeah, it was quite. I don't know. Um, to begin with, I think it was quite kind of daunting I suppose because I mean it's a bit weird because I'm the only person that doesn't get punched and you kind of feel a little bit left out but at the same time I'm quite glad that I'm left out <laughs> that bit so mm. um, but yeah like the, down to the training and things like I felt that I could match the boys so I never felt as if I was kind of but no it's it's great and it's, it's actually really nice to be in that kind of male energy because you don't really get a chance to do that a lot of the time so it's, it's mm. been really um, interesting to do that. Yeah. I'd like to open it out and let people ask some questions themselves.